What's up guys, thanks for tuning in. As we come up on our fifth year of living full time in our RV, we wanted to review some products that we bought way back in 2019, uh, some things that came with the fifth wheel that were installed in the fifth wheel when we bought it, uh, see what's made it for five years and what hasn't. So stay tuned. So the first thing we're gonna talk about uh, is our Remy 50 pint dehumidifier. When we started in 2019, we were stationary full time in Florida. So um, we were pretty much bouncing around state parks, Army Corps of Engineer parks down in South Florida. Uh, and if you are going to full time in Florida, if you're going to even visit Florida, make sure to have a dehumidifier. Um, inside the RV, it's it very, very stuffy. It gets very humid, uh, especially in Florida, anywhere in the South, but man, especially down in South Florida, it was just oppressive and just felt very sticky and just didn't, was not comfortable inside the RV. Uh, we purchased this. I did not realize that the 50 pint dehumidifier was so large when we bought it. Um, this is actually set up to do like a 1400 square foot house. So it's way overkill for the RV, but even their smaller versions uh, would be more than enough. Uh, but the Vrimi 50 pint dehumidifier has held up fantastic. It's been with us since the beginning, way back in 2019. Uh, we've had no issues with it. Uh, it's got a nice big tank so we can dump it uh, every, believe it or not, we actually dump this thing every couple days when we're in Florida. Um, but even when you're not in Florida, if you're somewhere, uh, we've, if you're running your heat at night, uh, you know you can get some moisture build up inside from running your heat. You can run this at night, keeps it nice and comfortable. Uh, the dehumidifier is a definite must have and this one has held up fantastic for five years. The next thing we're going to talk about is our Big Berkey water filter. Um, super popular in the RV community, but this thing has been fantastic. Now, there's not really any moving parts in the Berkey. It's just kind of a your top and bottom stainless steel chambers. Uh, it's got the filters inside. What we did have to replace on this, though, was the filters inside. So while we were traveling down the road, this top section actually fell over into the sink, uh, and the filter broke off. So we have had to replace the filters from breaking. Berkey recommends changing these filters every 3,000 gallons. Now we go through about two and a half gallons a day. This is the two and a half gallon version. Uh, we go, th we fill it up every day. So at two and a half gallons, uh, 3,000 gallons, I mean, you're looking at roughly 1,200 days of water filtration that you can get uh, out of this water filter. Um, we've been places where we've had well water and this filters at well water. It, it just, it's done a fantastic job. It's held up. We've been extremely happy with the Berkey. It's fell down and it's got some dents and dings and it's kind of beat up, but we've had it all five years and it was definitely a good buy for us. We would highly recommend the big Berkey water filter. The next thing we're gonna talk about that's made it all five years is our towels. These aren't just any towels. These are Turkish towels and you might think it's kind of crazy that towels would make it five years, but these things are great. When we purchased them, they came in a pack of six for $50, and these things are huge. They're very versatile. You can use them at the beach. You can use them for showers, and the great thing about them is that they dry really fast, and they take up very little room. I just pulled three of ours out. We still have the other three, so we have all six. And they've held up great. They're very durable and highly recommend Turkish towels. The next thing we're gonna talk about uh, is something that didn't make it all five years, uh, technically. It's been around a long time, but it didn't make it five years. That's our surge protector. So the one that we went with originally was the Progressive uh, EMS PT50X. So it has the digital display. It you can tell, I mean, this weather cover, this weather cover is all, all faded. I mean, it's all beat up on the back. I mean, so this one's been around a long time, but the original one that we bought only lasted not quite a year. It started getting the E10 air message, which is service surge protector. I call it Progressive Industries. Um, they had me send them pictures of, uh, of the actual plug side and then pictures from inside uh, inside where the power cord goes to make sure that it wasn't, you know, nothing was burned up here or, or nothing that uh, looked like a loose connection. 
uh, or any outside influence that caused the surge protector to fail. And uh, they shipped us out, uh, they shipped us out a new one. So super easy process to get the original one warrantied. And since then, we've had this one. The reason it's not plugged in right now is the campsite we're in uh, is actually only a 30 amp site. So didn't need our 50 amp surge protector for this, uh, for this spot. But um, it's been fantastic. It's held up great. Uh, it definitely has saved us um, for, from some places that had low voltage uh, that we would not have known there was low voltage if it weren't for having a good surge protector. And the Progressive Industries uh, PT50X is an awesome choice. Highly recommend this one for you. Next on the list, uh, something that didn't make it five years, but again, uh, got more than our money's worth out of, is our portable washing machine. Um, if you've seen our portable washing machine video, uh, you'll know that we did have to replace it. Um, our original one lasted almost two years. Uh, the replacement one has been with us ever since. So um, we've had no issues out of the replacement one. They're less than $200. I mean, the price has gone way up since our original one. We paid 100 bucks for our original one uh, back in 2019. We've gotten more than our money's worth out of both of these units, uh, even though it hasn't been around uh, all five years with us. Uh, we've been through basically two in five years. And uh, like I said, the replacement one, still going strong. And if you have a small space, you think you don't have room for a, a washing machine, uh, the little mini washer and spin dryer is just been a fantastic option for us. Uh, you can check out that video. We kind of go through how it operates, um, how we handle drying the clothes after they come out of the spin dryer. So definitely check that out if uh, you are curious about this mini washing machine. It's been a fantastic unit. Highly recommend, even though we have had to replace it. So next on the list of things that did not quite make it five years um, is something that we never even really considered, uh, and that is our RV toilet. Um, you know, the RV toilet is something that really gets overlooked, but ours, our factory uh, factory RV toilet, it was the uh, Thetford toilet that came with our grand design. Uh, it did not even make it two years. It failed in January of 2021, and what happened uh, is something that we've seen a lot of posts on in, in the RV groups on Facebook, and that is the pedal fell off. Um, I tried to put the pedal back on, but the way that that Thetford toilet is designed, uh, the way the pedal snaps on and the way the plastic is in there, basically the plastic wears out and there's no way to reattach the pedal once it falls off. Um, you can snap it back on, but every two or three flushes, it's just gonna pop back off. Um, if you're lucky, the spring that shuts your water valve won't pop off. Uh, if it pops off, you're gonna flush it, everything's gonna pop off, and now your water valve is gonna be stuck open and your toilet's gonna start filling up. So. Uh, you will have to spring into action real quick, run outside and shut the water off so your toilet doesn't fill up and overflow into your RV. Um, we eliminated that. We went with the Dometic 310. Of course, we have a video on that as well. I'll leave a link to that video uh, if you want to check out how we replaced our Thetford toilet with that Dometic toilet. There's a couple different options that Dometic has. They have the 310, they have the 320. Uh, it really just depends on how much space you have to work with and we kind of go through all that in that video. Um, what kind of space you're going to need, what measurements you need to check to see if that larger Dometic toilet would work for you. But since we replaced it, the Dometic toilet's been fantastic. Uh, we've had no issues out of it. So uh, hopefully by doing this video of all these things that have uh, been holding up well for us, hopefully we're not jinxing ourselves. But if they don't hold up and we have to replace it, well, we're going to do a video on that too. And the last thing we're going to touch on for things that did not last is going to be our RV suspension. Um, a lot of you out there that travel a lot, put a lot of miles on your rig, uh, the RV suspension is definitely something that you're going to keep a very, very close eye on. If you're in any Facebook groups, you're going to see posts of people with broken leaf springs, flattened out leaf springs, broken spring hangers. Um, the RV suspension just really takes an incredible beating. And honestly, most RV suspensions are really borderline to be even heavy duty enough to handle uh, the weight of the trailer before you even load all your stuff into it. So um, the RV suspension has been replaced on this twice. 
I've done it myself both times. The first time I did it was in September of 2021. Um, there were still a ton of COVID shortages going on for trying to get parts and uh, just couldn't get everything that I needed to do it really the correct way. Uh, my main concern was getting our flat leaf springs replaced so that we didn't break a leaf spring. The bushings in those springs wore out. Uh, when I found the bushings worn out, when I started pricing out what it would cost to replace the bushings, when I started looking at the effort it would take to remove those springs again and then replace the bushings, reinstall everything, um, I didn't really get the right the right leaf springs that I really wanted uh, back in 2021. So decided just to go ahead and just to go all in, upgrade the leaf springs, upgraded uh, the equalizer to the Moride equalizer, upgraded the shackles. So really did a did a more thorough uh, upgrade of the suspension system. Did that just, uh, just in May of 2023. There's a video on all that, um, kind of going through everything that we did uh, to beef up the suspension. Been very happy with it. It's held up very, very well. Uh, if you're looking at maybe changing out your leaf springs, changing your equalizer, definitely check that video out. Uh, I think there's going to be a lot of good information in there for you. So there you have it. Uh, that's some items that have made it five years and some things that have not made it for five years. Um, we put a ton of miles on our fifth wheel. Overall, we're very happy with it. Uh, it's definitely, definitely had some maintenance and uh, some repairs that have had to be done but when you travel down the road i mean it's like dragging these things you know through an earthquake every time you take them down the highway if you've been traveling for any anywhere even on a, a weekend vacation with a with a travel trailer fifth wheel uh, you'll know that the roads are terrible in most places uh, there are very few places that have really nice roads so they get beat up pretty bad the stuff inside your rv is going to get beat up along with it when it gets jostled around and shaked and knocked over so uh, dragging all this stuff all over the country for uh, the last five years really uh, really puts some some stuff to the test so that's going to do it for now we appreciate you guys watching and we'll catch you guys down the road